I hope your day is full of gumdrops and giggles and rainbows and butterflies and sprinkles and I don't know. This is a very happy intro. It's very Prozac-y. It's very like in your face. It's a Shank solo episode live from the canyon. It is I, Shank, coming in to check in with my Shanksters, to check in with my little babies and see how everyone's doing. Um, I have some shows coming up this Saturday. I will be a drop mic comedy in San Diego with Josh Potter. I will be featuring for him. There's two shows, one at 730 and one at 10. Come out, support live comedy. It's going to be so, so much fun. And I love meeting everyone in real life and hanging with you. Okay. Also, July 29th, uh, that's a Friday, Kim Congdon, Josh Potter, and I will all be in Bellflower at 8 p.m. on July 29th. We're all doing a longer set, so come out, support live comedy, exciting, exciting, more dates coming soon. Looks like we're going to be in Texas, Vegas, and hopefully New York by the end of the year, so look out for that coming at you as well. Guys, Give the give the gift of socks. You know, sometimes people piss you off and you want to just write them off completely. Instead of doing that, buy them a pair of socks, you know. Buy them a pair of socks from your favorite podcast. Support the people who support the show, guys. Uh, socks are an amazing gift. They say, hey, take care of your feet. Give your feet the gift of socks. Your feet carry around your heavy ass body all day long. You know what? Some days they just want to relax. They need a day off too. Get a pair of Oh Yeah socks. Shop ohyeah.com. That's three O's H-Y-E-A-H.com. Discount code Sarah 10. No matter what your interests are, there's a pair of socks for you. Whether you're into Dungeons and Dragons or Daisies or Aliens or Bigfoot or sunrises or plants there's a pair of socks for you guys and that's why i love oh yeah um support the people who support the show guys they're the longest shank sponsor and the most loyal so buy a pair of socks support them support support your favorite show by buying a pair of socks okay they got bob ross socks they have mr rogers socks whatever you're into there's a pair of socks for you thanks oh yeah Sarah 10. Oh, yeah. Dot com. Guys. Okay. I'm tired. It's a shank solo special. So there's a couple of things we're going to cover. First, we're going to start with abstract artists. Abstract artists can go fuck themselves. I'm sorry. Mm. You just throw a couple things on a p- canvas and that, that makes you an artist now? Have we all been... Okay, abstract artists have been getting away with so much since the beginning of time. Starting with Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock made it okay. He lay, he literally was like, oh, all of these people are taking art way too seriously. Let's trash it up a little. Let's just drip drop paints all over the place. Let's splatter up in this bitch. Let's just redefine what it is to be an artist. And rich people are like, hell yeah, that's different. We like it. We're into what you're doing. I mean, imagine being Jackson Pollock's girlfriend. Like, babe, I want to fuck. He's just splattering paint everywhere. Like, can you stop? Honey, did you set the timer on the oven? Sweetie, did you take out the trash? I'm sick of the fact that there's paint everywhere. Dating Jackson Pollock would be fun for like three days because you'd be like, yeah, my boyfriend is this abstract painter who who's doing things differently. But then the reality of dealing with an abstract painter day in and day out, he's like he would probably think he was the gen- a genius. I'm assuming that Jackson Pollock was a narcissist. That took a jump. Call me crazy. Call me old fashioned. But there's not there's no way that Jackson Pollock could be not a narcissist. Anyone who's throwing splatches of paint on a canvas and is like, look at me, I'm basically Jesus. <laughs> For sure a narcissist. Um I don't know. That's what's weird about art is that what is it about art? 
it's like, well, here's what it is about art, guys. It's kind of ridiculous in and of itself that someone can be like, is this art? And then someone else could be like, no, that's not art. This is art. And how is it that the statue of David and Jackson Pollock and Picasso and Matisse are all (laughs) types of art, but they're all so different? It doesn't make sense, really. Was I planning on getting into abstract art? No. I'm saying, you know what? Fuck Fuck it. I think I could do it. Get me a canvas. I'm going to start painting. It won't really make sense. And I'll just start stroke do, do, doing different brush strokes on a canvas and being like, yes, this is called summertime sadness. It reminds me of a <laughs> reminds me of my first divorce. <laughs> you know, at a certain point in life, you start realizing that at least you're not divorced. You're like, oh, okay. I've never been married, but I also haven't been divorced. But then I, I also have started to have a divorcee energy about me where I'm just like, yeah, fuck it, YOLO. You know? Yes, I'll get my nails done. Yes, I'll order that fucking extra. Yes, I know avocado takes costs extra. I don't care. Charge it to the game, sweetie. I'm a divorcee. That's just the energy I've been having lately of like, fuck it. I don't know. You guys took away my rights as a woman. So now um, I don't care that avocado is extra. I'll pay for it. No questions asked. Support the podcast by a pair of socks, guys. (laughs) Um, What other things do I have on my note on the sheet? Okay. I knew that my life was chaotic. You know that your life is chaotic when you're driving around and you look in the and there's a shoe in the middle of the road and you think to yourself is that mine fuck did I lose that shoe and uh that happened to me last week I was just cruising around I saw an adidas in the street and my first thought wasn't like oh someone lost a shoe it was oh is that mine which seems like (laughs) is that a cry if that's not a cry for help I don't know what is a cry for help you know what I mean? Uh, someone asked me if I think drummers are hot. Yeah, drummers are hot. It's like, yeah, obviously drummers are hot. Okay? Drummers are hot. We all think drummers are hot. Anyone who bangs on things for a living, hot. Anyone whose job is to make beats with their hands and sticks, hot. Of course. There's no question about whether or not drummers are hot. It's It becomes a question of whether or not dating a drummer is sustainable. Like, do you already have HPV? That's the first question. If you already have HPV, then dating a drummer might be w- w- good for you. If you <laughs> if you have commitment issues, then dating a drummer might be right for you. If you like getting fucked in public restrooms, then dating a drummer might be right for you. But do I think dating a drummer is right for me at this point in my life? No, I don't think. I don't see myself with a drummer. 25-year-old me saw myself married to a drummer 25 year old me saw myself carrying a drummer's babies 25 year old me was making a drummer eggs benedict while he was out cheating on me 35 year old me says no go bang on your drum somewhere else honey no i don't have time for that i want i want someone who goes to an office i want someone who's disciplined i want someone whose life is more structured than mine no at a certain point you're like no more creatives okay go be creative yeah no maybe like a, a guy who has a drum set but he isn't a drummer by a uh, job i don't see myself with a drummer it's loud i'm loud I feel like if we had children, that would be chaotic. I'm yelling. I'm like, did you take out the trash? He's like practicing his new drum solo. The kid's crying. I just, I don't see myself with a drummer for numerous reasons. I don't see myself with a, oh, and the equipment. Can you imagine? It takes up all of the, like such a big room in the house. He's got to come have someone install soundproof walls. It's like, oh, no, his amp blew out. I don't even know if that's a thing that could happen, but I'm just trying to get lost in the fantasy of dating a drummer. I don't think I would do well with a drummer. I think I have the energy of someone who could end up with, like, a tambourine player 
someone who likes banging on things, but also <laughs> is a little more, it was a little more, uh, it's a little less violent. Yeah. I, I would fuck a tambourine player. I would marry a tambourine player. Now, that'd be so annoying. Marrying a tambourine player who travels in a band. I'd be like, you're not that important. You're not going on the road. He's like, babe, I'm going on the road again. It's like, sweetie, you just shake a tambourine every once in a while. Yeah, but I, the band needs me. Dude, a self-important tambourine player in a band, would there be anything worse? Like the guy who plays the triangle who thinks he's the front man of the band. That that would be someone I'd end up with. Someone with a weird personality disorder where he thinks that since he plays the triangle, he's the <laughs> he's the front man of the band. <laughs> the triangle man. I would end up with the triangle man over over the drummer who fucks everyone and just lives life in the fast lane. I think that the vibe of a drummer is someone who just fucks whatever and lives life in the fast lane. That's the motto. Hell yeah, we bang on shit. The tambourine guy, he's he's sweet. He'll text you the next day. He'll tell you about the benefits of adding a little bit of microgreens to your food. He'll be like, yeah, I put sprouts on my sandwiches. It's great for you. The tambourine guy. I see myself with the tambourine guy over a drummer. I don't know if what that says about me. But yeah. If you're a man who plays the tambourine and you're looking for a wife, side of my DM, sweetie. Oh, soon enough, we'll get you to give up the pa- <laughs> your passion of being tambourine man. And uh, you can become a stay-at-home dad. I'm out here looking for tambourine men to impregnate me. How's your week, baby? Um... Do I believe in ghosts? Hell yeah, I believe in ghosts. I believe in... I believe that we live in a multi-dimensional universe and that there's people trapped in between these dimensions. Spirits, entities, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, for sure I do. I believe... But I'm also kind of a spiritual being. I believe in all of this stuff. I try to meditate. I try to clear my head. Because let me tell you, a bitch's head gets crazy. I'm carrying around all kinds of weird thoughts. I'm carrying around thoughts about drummers. I'm carrying around thoughts about abstract painters. I'm talking shit about, you know, I don't know, this and that. And and I got to clear this head. I got to meditate every once in a while. Otherwise, the thoughts become a little intrusive, honey. What I'm saying is nothing like a little bit of meditation to recenter you. Am I doing an ad for meditation 10 minutes into my podcast? Yes. Was I planning on doing that? No. Um, yes, I do believe in ghosts. Ghosts are for sure something that I believe exist on this planet. Um I haven't been, especially since I've been to the comedy store and there's weird shit that happens at the comedy store, like doors will will open when no one's there. Um, It's definitely one of the most haunted buildings in Los Angeles. It has a haunted ass history. Um, So yes, I believe in ghosts. Do I reminisce about my old Kill Tony sets? I don't know what that means. Like, do I sit around and say, wow, that was a great set that I did on Kill Tony 10 years ago? No, not really. But I'm thankful for my experience on Kill Tony. I'm thankful for the feedback I got from people who were doing the craft a lot longer than I was, the relationships that I made, the tools that I got. Um, They gave you a lot of uh, great feedback, including the fact that there are no shortcuts and that comedy takes a long ass time (laughs) it's a lot of tweaking and writing and showing up even on days when you don't feel like showing up so um I'm thankful for my experience on Kill Tony I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world uh yeah so let me see abstract art shoe in the street we covered all of that do I believe in ghosts of course I believe in ghosts anyone who doesn't believe in ghosts is a straight idiot it's like oh you think we're the only people beings that the, we live in a one-dimensional universe no there's lots of entities there's lots of shit that's happening i think that we can only understand so much with our human with our limited human brains you know what i mean 
like when we look down at an ant and we think, oh, that ant thinks that it's so powerful because it's a part of a colony. You know, that's how I think God sometimes looks down at us. He's like, or she, it's got to be a she. She looks down at us and says, oh, look at this poor, silly human. She thinks she's got it all figured out. Plot twist. Here's a plot twist. What? Whoever, if there is a God and whoever's writing this season of Earth is high as fuck. Okay. I was reading about how there's snails in Florida. This was an actual news headline that I read about how there's snails in Florida and they're like eight inches and they're disease carrying. I mean, this is some biblical shit. This is some end of the world shit. No one, in what other story would you hear about eight inch snails that were carrying diseases this is if i was god and i was writing end of earth i'd make the snails eight inches god's high look at the flamingo the perfect example of god being high god was like oh let's make the, let's just throw them for a loop we'll make a pink bird that stands on one foot what it'll have two but it'll only stand on one so okay so it's not a one-legged pink bird. No, it's a two-legged pink bird that likes to stand on one leg. Riddle me that. It's like God's high. God is for sure high. Otherwise, where would... There's other things, too, that make no sense. Do you ever look at wildlife and think, huh? Dude, these spiders, they be working hard. I go to bed, no spider webs. I wake up in the morning, these motherfuckers built themselves a goddamn mansion. I don't understand it. Doesn't make sense to me. God's high. God's like, what if they could just shoot out <laughs> a cotton-like material out of there? Where does web even come out of? A, your dick? Spiders just shoot web out of their dick? <laughs> Spiders come web. This is the most idiotic podcast i'm probably losing subscribers left and right they're like this bitch thinks that spiders come web but it's not a bad guess for someone who doesn't know much about spiders i mean why wouldn't it that be a possibility it'd be a lot more useful than what spider sperm spider web dude if if men if human men could come a material that we could then live in things would be a lot different. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's what happens. I don't think that spider web is male ejaculate. Guys, I wasn't planning on taking this type of turn. Um, this podcast is all over the rails because it's a solo pod. So we go, we go places <laughs> other podcasts are afraid to go. You know, a lot of people would shy away from talking about whether or not spider web is spider cum, but not me. I just dive right in. Ah, someone asked me, Sarah, if you had to have a threesome with God, the devil, and God, the devil, and then what? Well, besides God and the devil, what else is there? God, the devil, and Oprah? God, the devil. Who would you cast as God? Who would you cast as devil? And then, I guess, Oprah? For some reason, Oprah is just sticking out of my head. So, I'm going to trust my gut on this. I'm going to say, if I had to have a threesome with God, the devil, and Oprah, who would play God? Who would play devil? And, and why is Oprah in my threesome? I'm just very upset about the fact that for some reason I decided to place Oprah in the middle of a threesome with the devil and God. I, I'm thinking I might be able to feed Oprah to the devil and then just fuck God and get, in <laughs> get some of that pure positive energy racing through my veins. Do you know what I mean? Uh, okay, so if I had to fuck God, the devil, and Oprah... Who would play God? Hmm. Beyonce. Beyonce. Beyonce is God. I could see that. Beyonce is God. Who would be the devil? I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning towards like a Danny DeVito energy. 
yeah, Danny DeVito as the devil, and I could feed Oprah to Danny DeVito and then just fuck Beyonce, and we all live happily ever after. Solo pods, you cover a lot of grounds on, on the solo pods. That's when you really find out who your podcast host is, you know? I wasn't going into this week's episode planning and being a prude. I wasn't going to... I, told, I promised myself and you that I wouldn't hold back. And yes, I just fed Oprah to Danny DeVito, who's the devil, and fucked Beyonce. So, you're welcome, guys. A new, all, an all-new episode of Shank. We cover as many things as you think we're going to cover, and then more. <laughs> okay, if you had to have breakfast, someone wants to know, if I had to have breakfast with someone who died in the last 10 years, who would it be and why? Okay, so breakfast. Hmm. In the last 10 years. Betty White. I would love to have breakfast with Betty White. I'd be like, listen, Betty, sorry that you uh, died right before you turned 100. That sucks. But anyways, what's the secret? I know you didn't have kids. Was that, did that help you stay funnier, longer? You know, Betty, what is it that you like to do in your free time? I think she liked to get drunk. I would love to get drunk with Betty White at breakfast. I don't even drink, but I feel like that would be the, the move. Like, yeah, we'll have some vodka gimlets. I don't know. What does Betty White drink? That was the oldest drink I could think of. I don't even know what a vodka gimlet is. It just seems like something an 100-year-old would drink. Betty White! Yeah, two gimlets. Vodka gimlets. One for me and one for Betty White. We're just going to talk about how to hack the industry as comedic geniuses. <laughs> yes, Betty? No, it's on me, Betty. Don't worry. Order as many gimlets as you want. Charge it to the game. These are tax write-offs for me, Betty. Catch me having an imaginary <laughs> conversation with Betty White, who is recently departed but still alive in my soul, clearly. Um, and we'd have the breakfast of champions. Bloody Marys and Benedict. Just me and Betty. Breakfast with Betty White and I. I mean, can you imagine a more fun breakfast to be a part of? I truly can't. Truly cannot think of a more fun breakfast to be a part of. Maybe Robin Williams stops by. I'm bringing back all the great deads. Why not? Mitch Hedberg's in the area. Throw him at the table. You know, here, Mitch, grab some waffles. Sit down. Have a smoke. Let's talk. Let's talk jokes. Um, I just leaned on my arm for so long. It's, isn't it weird that your body parts can literally fall asleep? It's just pins and needles and you're supposed to act like that's normal. Like That's just something that happens. Like our body parts literally shut down if we put too much weight on them. Or we... Um, <laughs> that's crazy. When you put it that way, it's really fucking crazy. It feels like pins and needles. The thoughts of pins and needles, the symptom of pins and needles, it could mean anything. It could be like, oh yeah, you just have a... Um, you sat on your hand. Or it could mean you're literally about to go into cardiac arrest. That's what's crazy about being a human being. It's like the secondary symptoms of things. You're like, oh, this could be nothing. Or it could be worst case scenario. And when you live in a country where healthcare is super expensive you're always hoping that it's just a little nothing and it's not worst case scenario you know what i mean um okay let's see drummers are hot we we cover that yes i have big divorce a energy did we cover that i haven't been divorced at a certain point i think you just get happy you haven't been divorced like yeah i haven't been divorced I have the energy of someone who's been divorced because, sweetie, I've been dumped. I've been broken up with. Um, I have the energy of someone who's been married like six times, but I've never been married once. <laughs> and that's what happens when you're single at 35, honey. You just get callous and you're like, whatever. Thank you, next. Guys. I hope you enjoyed this solo podcast of Shank. We covered a lot. We covered everything from Jackson Pollock to how I oftentimes think shoes in the street that are just random strangers are mine. Uh, we covered the fact that I will be in San Diego this weekend with Josh Potter and that I will be 
in Bellflower on July 29th at 8 p.m. with Kim Congdon and Josh Potter as well. And guys, make sure to check out my other podcast, This Bitch with Kimberly Congdon. New episodes of that out for you every Monday. And we'll see you here next week on Shank. Thanks. Bye.